Oh, you're in the video. I'll crop that. <laughs> it's good. Oh, it's... my God. Is there any way to, like, crop that with something? I don't freaking know. Baseball. Do you so? Hey, guys. What's going on? We're having some technical difficulties trying to keep my uh, phone straight. Hey, so I just wanted to tell you guys something. Uh, I don't remember what I said in the video yesterday. Something about uh, the other Verizon SIM brand. I think I called it Visual. If I said visual, I'm so sorry. I meant to say vision. Okay, vision is another sub brand of the um, Verizon network. So I just want to let you guys know that. I just want to clear that up. Um, hope you all had a good Easter. I'm driving back and picked up food as we speak. Um, we got storms coming in. I might shoot you guys a video during storms and show you the decibels during that just out of pure freaking boredom. Um, let me see, what else was I gonna talk about? Oh, so I know a lot of you guys are asking me about uh, pings and stuff like that. We talked about NAT types. Hey, if your ping is high with this, it still works good. I don't notice any lag. Okay, sometimes I'll be anywhere from 30 to 60 ping, okay? Sometimes it takes a second for it to read. When you do a speed test, it might shoot to 100 ping, but it's really about probably 30 to 40, okay? In all actuality, sometimes there's just a delay on the speed test. Um, one of the other things you guys keep asking me about was uh, uh, antennas, right? Have you guys seen my last five, six, seven, I don't know, videos that I fucking posted? It's all about antennas. Yes, it's about the MoFi. The MoFi is great. The antennas are for those of us who are far from the tower. So what kind of antenna do you need? Listen, guys, most of the antennas you can find are on eBay and Amazon. I bought 99% of mine all on Amazon. You can search parabolic grid antenna. It will come up, it's $249. There's a couple other brands out there. If it's the same thing, give it a shot, okay? Um, wow, this thing is like really distracting. Um, all right, so parabolic grids. So you want a parabolic grid, the, the dish looking antenna, if you are far as F from the tower, like me, 12 miles, all right? So with that being said, um, get the parabolic grid. If you're closer to the tower, like a mile, you might not even need an antenna. You could probably use the little paddle antennas that go on the MoFi, okay? So don't start investing a shit ton of money in antennas until you know what the MoFi is bringing in. If you're happy and content with 10 or 20 down, great. Use 10 or 20 down. Um, if you're trying to make it better, then get yourself a MIMO antenna. Uh, they make a single panel MIMO antenna. It's called a uh, proxy cast. 4G LTE uh, polarizing antenna, okay? And literally all you do is you put it on a pole or mount it somewhere and it comes with two connectors already on it. That That's why it's MIMO, but it's one, it's one, uh, shit, cut. Um, okay, sorry about that. So it's, it's one panel antenna with two pigtails coming out. You'll get two LMR cables and plug them into your MoFi. Simple, right? That one worked for me 12 miles away. That's why I recommend it. It's a $99 antenna. It's on Amazon. Search it, Proxycast, okay? Um, and if that if that's not cutting it, then you upgrade. You could try getting two standard Yagi antennas that you would use with a booster. Make sure they're the 50 ohm fucking wide band. That's the key word for these antennas. They need to say wide band. Why do they gotta say wide band? Because frequency ranges range from like you know 700 and something all the way up to 2500 on the spectrum. Don't, don't overthink it, don't get confused. If it says wide band, you're good, okay? Um, that's cause like band 13 and stuff like that, they're on the lower frequency bands in like the seven, eight hundreds or some shit. Band four is somewhere up in the thousands, okay? So you need to have wide band so you can cover all bands. Does that make sense? Um, and now the panel antenna, if the proxy cast panel antenna don't cut it for you, if that doesn't cut it for you, uh, you get the two Yagis, like I said. If the two Yagis don't cut it for you, try log periodics. Um, I had two Yagis prior to the log periodics. They worked okay, but they would lose a lot of reception, okay? Uh, signal quality, specifically. The signal strength was decent, but it wasn't as good as the parabolic grid, bottom line. So, if you're closer to a tower within five, six, seven miles, go with a couple Yagis, go with a couple log periodics. The log periodics, a, a Yagis this long, a log periodic is like this long, okay? They're long, all right? So the longer the antenna, the better. That's just kind of a rule of thumb. Not to mention the log periodics got a band extra that the Yagis didn't. 
I don't know why or how, maybe it just is wider band, I don't know, but I wasn't seeing band five before, now I'm getting band five, okay? Um, <clears throat> so, you got the logs, you got the Yagis, and you've got the panel in that order. And then the best one is the parabolic grid, okay? So, and the parabolic grid is by far like the best. So, I just wanna let you guys know that when you're shopping around for antennas or what, what antennas to get, watch all my other videos, see what's best for you. Line of sight is very important. If you've seen my other videos, you guys know I'm surrounded by trees. You don't have to have a direct line of sight, but you wanna be pointed in the general direction of the tower, okay? the general direction of the tower. There are signals out there. If your phone has one bar of LTE on it, all right, you're gonna get MIMO or you're gonna get some kind of service uh, of bands brought into your to your MOFI, okay? That's all it takes is one little signal, all right? If you don't even have a signal, it'll probably find existing signals, all right? Keep in mind when you're searching for bands on the parabolic grid, it's not like the Yagis uh, where you're looking at the real time, let's say you go to your MoFi settings, check signal status, um, and, you, and it shows you've got this many decibels. Well, with the parabolic grid, it'll do that if you're somewhere within the window of where the, the tower is, okay? If you're totally this way and the tower's this way, it's gonna say no signal, okay? With a Yagi, you could be pointed this way, the tower's here, you still might have like negative 120, 125 decibels. Parabolic grid is very directional. It needs to be dialed the F in, okay? So just keep that in mind. It's like what they call it, laser beam technology, laser beaming um, very narrow right to the tower, bringing you in strongest signals, okay? Um, versus a Yagi, it's gonna be a little bit more broad, okay? Yagis are almost kind of like a directional, omnidirectional, if you will, okay? Uh, same thing for the log periodics. So, if you can get two parabolic grids and you've got poles for it, great, do it. Um, but I, after trying Yagi's, another parabolic grid, um, and a log periodic as my secondary antenna, as my secondary, okay, on the MoFi, they all did about the same exact thing. The decibels were about exactly the same. I saw negative 6.5 on the signal quality this morning. Last night, negative 6.7 and I'm staying in the negative sevens. When it gets windy, I'm at negative eight, negative nine, negative 10. That's just the ropes. But I still have service. I don't lose service when, unless it gets past like negative 12. Um, and that's just, that's the break sometimes. It doesn't happen very often, but sometimes it does, especially when it's really stormy out. Just like your satellite dish when that goes out when there's a storm coming, okay? So I just wanted to share that with you guys um, just to kind of clear up what kind of antennas to shop for. Crawl, walk, run. Start with the MoFi and its antennas that come with it. Um, like right now, I see a I see a tower. Okay, I see a water tower that has one like little panel on it. It does emit some some signal. However, that's not where my my uh, parabolic grid is pointing, right? But I would probably get away with a MoFi right here. Like I can see it, probably a football field away. Okay, so, shit like that, you know. Um, but if you want to point right at it, get yourself a cheap antenna. I mean, even one Yagi. Would, would probably work for you if you're that close to a tower. But it's always better to get two because one will be the, the primary and one will be the secondary. They work together, thus making a MIMO. You angle them at 45 degrees and it really just funnels it in, okay? Or you can put one on top of the other. You can do it like this, whatever. All right, so I want you guys to, to experiment. Don't break your bank unless you absolutely have to. Guys, like, yes, my wife, will, she's sitting right over here. She'll tell you, John, you're always buying yourself shit. I'm like, no, I'm not. This is for us. This is for us. You guys can thank me later, okay? My neighbor's putting his up this uh, this week. I'm pretty excited for him. He's waiting for a grandfathered sim, which he purchased on eBay from a link that I shared with him, just like I shared with you guys on yesterday's video. Search grandfathered fucking AT&T or Verizon plans, and boom, pick one, roll with it. See what happens, all right? so. Back to the beginning of the video, Verizon has a sub-brand, it's called Vision, not Visual. So, I apologize for that. Oh, and some somebody, this, this, this Ben dude keeps commenting on my page, I blocked him, but he's so butthurt because he's got an M1 Netgear Nighthawk, and I talked smack about it, I told him it sucks, 
like especially on my last video <clears throat> listen guys the reason why i said it sucks is because you can't van lock on that where's the fun in that you can't play with it uh and it's like this big it's not industrial are you gonna put this little plastic box up in your freaking attic that gets 150 60 degrees I'm just saying, if it's if you're AT and T specific and you know exactly what if that works for you, great. I'm not knocking you using your M1. I'm just saying compared to the MoFi, it sucks. Straight out. If you don't have to spend the money and you know specifically you have if I have AT and T, then stick with your M1. It should do the same thing as far as you can put some antennas on it, but you're gonna have to have a couple more adapters. You're gonna need to get the uh, the TS9 fucking connectors. Then you got to get those to connect to the LMR cables and then the LMR cables to your antenna keep that in mind all right just like i sent the guy a link yesterday um, on which cables he needs to get all right so other than that guys that's pretty much it i love you stay safe make sure you're using plenty of this shit and um i'll see you guys again peace oh, shit. hey guys what's up again hey i'm home i ate my fattening ass food and now i gotta work out twice as hard tomorrow Hey, listen, <clears throat> you know, I mentioned, uh, you know, once your decibels start getting in the, the negative 12s on the signal quality, signal strength should stay roughly the same. Um, it'll fluctuate a little bit, but your signal quality or your strength, if they start to, to fluctuate pretty bad, <clears throat> sometimes the MoFi does this, okay? It will, it'll get stuck in a mode. Um, let's say all day it was windy or it was crappy. Or another reason why your, your decibels will spike up, <clears throat> traffic, <clears throat> right? Everybody's on their fucking phones. Everybody's just playing around with their gadgets, gaming online, whatever the hell they're doing. So the towers during peak hours are going to, are going to, it's weird because <clears throat> you're going to see if you're looking at your MoFi and you're looking at your settings and you're looking at your decibels live time, real time, you're going to see them go up and then they're going to go down and they're going to go like this and then down. Okay. Um, that's why I've come to the conclusion because when I check it at 11 o'clock, two in the morning, 11 o'clock at night or two in the morning, five in the morning, six in the morning, the decibels are insane and they're stable, like negative seven straight out. Like, so what does that tell me? There's my answer. My wife is dancing in the background, distracting the hell out of me. I, I love you, hon. I'm going to put you on video. So... What, that, that's how I know. So when I'm, when I'm telling you guys stuff, it's not because I just, I know shit. Um, I know from trial and error and experience, okay? I'm experienced, 38 years old, man, okay? So the experience is, is if the signal strengths, the decibels are not fluctuating at those hours, that's because nobody's online. Everybody's, okay? So that's why, all right? So, and then don't forget, you got trees and wind and rain and degradation that way too, all right? But listen, that's, so, okay, so how do I combat that? Well, I was getting back to doing what I always do, I talk in circles. Um, I've been told in recruiting I talk in circles too. Like, I'll be talking about a topic and totally jump topics. I'm sorry about that, guys. I don't know. It's, I've never been diagnosed with anything, but, um, so... Sometimes when it spikes up to, say your signal quality spikes up to like negative 12, negative 12.5, and you're just pissed. And you're like, this is impossible. It's not windy out. I mean, I know with God, it's two in the afternoon. Why is it like that? Okay, so maybe it was windy earlier, right? And so it spiked up, but guess what happened? It didn't drop back down because the MoFi got stuck in a mode. All right, that's sometimes it happens. It got stuck in a mode. You ever have broadband in town? where you have just the worst provider, like it could be like CenturyLink, it could be, it could be freaking Cox, Spectrum, Time Warner, and you'll call them all the time. My internet sucks. And they're like, did you reboot your router? Okay, well, same shit for the MoFi. Reboot it. There's a couple different ways to do it. Don't fuck this up. I'm going to warn you once. Do it the way I tell you to do it. We all know if you go into the MoFi settings, you can go to MoFi internal settings and hit reset Sierra module, right? Great. That resets your module, right? So then you go back to check signal strength, you know, and all of a sudden you were on band four before and you look and you're like, why am I in negative 
110 decibels and I'm on band 13. Well, dumbass, you, uh, <laughs> you reset the Sierra module, therefore it's just gonna auto detect the best band, okay? So now that band lock that you originally had went away. And now, because the MoFi kind of sucks, you're gonna have to wait two, three minutes. You gotta go back into band lock, select band four, and now hit save, let it do its whole boot cycle again. Takes you two, three more minutes. Then you go back in, check the signal quality and strength or whatever, and you realize you're back on band four and shit's great, right? So keep that in mind. You don't wanna hit reset Sierra module through the MoFi settings. This is how you reset it. When you get stuck at high decibels or you're just so pissed that you just can't figure out why it's so high, when all else fails, do a reset. I'm serious, it works. I reset the thing sometimes once, twice a day. I actually haven't reset it at all today. It's been, it's been awesome. So here's what you do. So my MoFi is in the attic. I got it running to... I have a crack in the door in my son's room in that attic door where they're coming out. Do I have the wires kinked or pinched in the door? No. There is a luckily a nice gap for an Ethernet cord to come out to my router and the MoFi power plug. It's great. There's just enough space after I shut it. It doesn't kink the wire. So don't hate on me when you see my setup, guys. So, and it's plugged into a power strip. Just a regular, uh, what you call those things that you plug in your wires to? Freaking, what are they called? Power strips? Not power strips. What are they called? Surge protector. Surge protector. <laughs> That's why I married you because she's so smart. It's plugged into a surge protector. Sounds like a good idea, right? And there's a switch on it to turn it off and on so I don't have to unplug it, right? This is America. We're a little lazy. So... <clears throat> I usually, well, I am pretty lazy, text my son, hey, reboot, dude. Guess what? <laughs> he says, okay. And then sometimes I'll say, Re reboot after 30 seconds. So I have to make him wait. Because he's lucky, though. He's actually wired into my router um, into his PC. So he's got access to it because the router's actually in his room way the hell up on the third floor. And we still got Wi-Fi all down throughout the house and outside in the yard all the way around. Okay. Um, that's not with the MoFi. That's with my neck gear that's plugged in and tethered to the MoFi. Okay. So he, he turns it off. He waits a couple seconds and he turns it back on. That reboots everything. Everything's plugged into that. My router, because my router and shit will boot up well before the MoFi does. The MoFi is slow as shit. So then you see the internet light come back on on the router. Then you go back into your MoFi settings. Through my night gear router. Yes, I can access the MoFi settings. 192.168.10.1. And Boom. I check the signal strength, I'm back on band four, boom. I'm at negative 7.8. Um, and my fucking quality or strength is at negative 103, where I'm supposed to be. And that negative 12 just went away. It's funny, but it does. So sometimes what I'm trying to get at guys, reset the MoFi manually. Don't do it through the settings, okay? Cause you're, it'll keep the band. It will keep the band that you were locked on that way, okay? That's like a hard reset on your computer. Um, I don't know why the reset on the MoFi settings is different. They should have an option where it's just like a literal reset button that you could do through your phone, but that's probably just too complex for them right now. But just, just physically turn it off and on and you will fix a lot of problems when all else fails. Uh, say your internet light. A lot of times too, guys, another tip I'll give you is if you do a um, firmware upgrade, if you go down on the left side and you click on system in your MoFi settings, down there it'll say something like flash firmware or something. And I click it and it'll say, oh, there's a new version, 1.7.20 or some shit. Click it. You're going to have to click it again, then hit save. And then boom, it's going to say, now you're going to have to please wait like 10 minutes. And it's going to do a countdown. You're going to see it on your, on your phone or whatever you're using your computer. It's going to count down 959, 958, 957. You got to wait 10 minutes for the firmware upgrade. If you don't have a stable signal at that time, um, it won't upgrade. You'll do, you'll wait the whole damn 10 minutes. You'll go back in, you'll go check the system. You'll check firmware upgrade and it's going to say, uh, there, the upgrade didn't happen. Okay. So you're going to basically have to wait till your internet comes back on. If you lost internet for some crazy reason, but you shouldn't, um, go back in there and redo the upgrade. Okay. I had to do that the other day. Uh, it hasn't happened to me before. It just randomly happened. Just thought I'd bring it up as a tip. All right. These are tips for you guys on operating the MoFi. Why upgrade the firmware? 
I would say stay up on your firmware, check it once a week because there's always, like I've upgraded it three times uh, since, I don't know, this past month, okay, or the month before. So, and that could be things from um, cell providers catching on. That could be things from making the MoFi bet, perform better, <clears throat> whatever, but just do it. I've had no issues uh, with my firmware upgrades. I have the SIM four combo, SIM two combo. I don't have the seven combo, the new one that just came out. Why the hell wouldn't I get the SIM seven combo? Because I mean, it has more bands. It has like bands 66 and 70 something. Um, and I, I actually bought one to try it out to see if I could get more bands out here, but it didn't get more bands. So I sent the thing back. And the other shitty thing was too, it didn't find internet. Like I couldn't get internet to come on on it. I was troubleshooting with MoFi over the phone. I was troubleshooting myself. I did a band scan, the internet light came on once, then I did a speed test, and then it stopped again. So I sent the thing back, the Sim 7 combo that's like cheaper. It's like, I don't know, $2.99 versus the $3.30 something you pay for the regular MoFi, okay? So you can try it out. But one issue that was brought up to the MoFi tech, which those guys suck, um, because they make you do all this bullshit steps, Instead of just getting to the meat and potatoes, you say, listen, I did this, I did this. Can I just, can we just move on to the next step? Like, I'm telling you, like, he wanted me to disconnect my antennas and put the paddle antennas on. Like, he thought that was going to fix my internet. I'm like, guy, we're going backwards. The thing is in the attic. It's not going to get any internet. Like, okay. But back to my point. He said that the reason why you might not be getting internet is, uh, could be like the, the IMEI or model number or something of the MoFi is locked in with Verizon. So Verizon's tracking my SIM being tied to that MoFi, the one that I'm currently using, okay? So if that's true, I don't know, but just keep that in mind. If you're trying to switch MoFi's and you put your SIM in and it doesn't work, if you're paying through a plan through your provider, okay, the provider, Verizon allows the MoFi, okay? They do, especially for rural people like us. So you need to let them know that you changed and that you need your SIM to work. Worst case scenario, they'll probably say, oh, well, let's send you another SIM. Hopefully not. But just make sure they don't take away your grandfather plan. Got it? Uh, all right. So I'm done rambling. It's Easter. I should be spending time with my family. Um, but my wife, she looks very content right now on her laptop. My kids are gaming on my awesome internet. And I'm about to play some Call of Duty and drink coffee like a boss. So, if you guys have any more questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I was just scrolling through the other day and noticed I had hundreds. And I've probably replied to 99% of you. Some of you, if I didn't reply to, I missed it. I didn't get the alert. Because I get an email and I usually hit reply. It takes me right to the comment. Or I just can't freaking find it in the damn mess of comments. So if you comment on my newer videos, your chances of getting responded to are much better. I don't know how one of them has like what? What did I say? 16,000 views? Crazy. It's crazy. Like I want to be doing like bodybuilding videos and shit. Not talking about internet and rambling about it all day, but <sighs> nothing else to talk about. So let's talk about internet. We could do a bodybuilding internet page. What do you guys think? Send me some recommendations what I can do. I, I, I know I'm an army recruiter. I do army videos. I, uh, shit, man. I used to be in a rock band before the army. All kinds of cool things I'm talented at, you know? I'm just, well, that's true. But anyway, um, but yeah, you know, you guys let me know. I like to make it more fun. You know, that's why I did all these videos. Yeah, I swear a lot. Get the hell over it, fuckers. Um, and it's just for, you know, I like to break things down to you guys to understand it Barney style, okay? I am a Barney style learner, you know, I had to do the, the, the bullshit searching on this technology and how to make everything work um, by all these boring people that are foreign and just and make sense and make, make my brain process it all and try to make it easy to you to understand. Whew. Okay, so yeah, man. MoFi 4500. Oh, there was this kid. One last thing, man. This young, young, young boy, he said he's about to be 16. Hey, happy Easter, bro. You know who you are. We spoke earlier today. Um, he says, oh, I might get I might get maybe $200 for my, for my birthday. Because first he was asking me about my ping. And I thought I was just an adult, just a normal person. 
It's like I'm about to be 60, but I don't think I'll, I don't know if I'll have quite enough to buy everything. I'm, right now, I'm just using my cell phone hotspot for internet. Man, I, bless the kid's heart, man. I feel bad for him. Like, you know, my kids are freaking spoiled, and this kid's acting, well, shit, I don't give my kids 200 bucks, but he's, he's, uh, you know, he's going to get his 200 bucks. And you know what I did? I, I searched on Amazon, SIM card uh, reader router, and I found these cheap uh, Chinese like ones or Kufis or whatever, Hufis or whatever, Kuwe or anyway, they look just like a MoFi. In fact, they perform just like a MoFi. They do. If you read the stuff, it's all the same shit. Might not be the exact same settings, but it should be typically the same concept. 89 bucks. I'm not getting paid by MoFi to do this crap. It just works for me. So it's just easier for me to tell you because I want you guys to have good stuff. Now, you might be better just getting the $89 shits if you just searched on Amazon. You know, they have them on eBay for like 50, 60 bucks. Because in the end scheme, that's pretty much what they're worth anyway. But you know, name brand stuff is going to cost more. That's just the way it is in life. All right. So I sent him the link to the cheaper one, the cheaper antenna, since he said he was only a few miles from the tower and the cheaper cables. You know, search this shit, guys. There's cheaper stuff. You see my links. I don't even know if they exist anymore. When the stuff sells out, they go away. There, like somebody just the other day was asking me what kind of cables I need. I sent him a link. I said, you can find them cheaper. He sent me a link to a cheaper set with like 15 bucks versus 40. I was like, holy shit, dude. Yes, get those because they're cheaper. Okay. So when you're shopping for cables and antennas and everything, shop around, shop around. Alrighty. And with that being said, everyone, you have a wonderful, and in North Carolina, as they'd say, blessed night. And I will see you all. Maybe if you all have an idea for me with that video idea here in the near future. All right, you guys, stay strong. All right, everyone. I'm just going to physically show you a couple things. All right. Uh, all right, dudes. So this is the main page that comes up. When you're looking at your decibels live time, click this. Check your signal strength. This is the one I always use. Look at where I'm at. And my wife is currently uploading a video. That is not bad whatsoever. Okay. Um, I don't even know if I'll get a, even a decent speed test while she's uploading, but we're going to try. So let's see where we're at. Sweet. So I can't even get a speed test. Awesome. All right. Next thing. <laughs> Could be this this uh, speed testing is outdated. Um, I know I kept getting an alert. The fuck. All right. So when you go here, um, but I have internet. Okay, I can I can clearly see it. So some of the things you might want to check when your MoFi is being finicky. Like I told you, you're going to go into MoFi internal modem, MoFi internal settings. All right, right here is your carrier. If you're on Verizon, it should say VZW Internet Verizon Sprint Mode. Okay, always make sure those are there. Provider selector you shouldn't have to mess with. Some people use generic with Verizon. Uh, it doesn't really change a difference for me. So I always keep it on the Verizon Sprint Mode. You have a drop down. Um, this is all pre-configured for you. Um, band scanner is the popular one. You'll hit start scan. It'll show you all your different bands. Um, I have two, two, four, five, thirteen, and fucking some other one. All right. Um, advanced band lock. If you wanted to use carrier aggregation, you would turn uh, band lock over here. You would whatever band you're on, turn that one off, and then select it over here. So I'd select band four and like band 13. So if I want to use carrier aggregation with band four and band 13, I'll use them together. But it's, it's a pain in the ass. Sometimes it'll say band, you're on band 13 and your carrier aggregating with band four. Uh, band 13 for me gets me one to two megabits down. The signal uh, strength is a lot better than band four, but the quality is worse and it's, it's, it's terrible out here. So band four is like the only band I use. I don't use carrier aggregation. It doesn't help me whatsoever freaking ever next wi-fi like for some of y'all are initially setting this up 
Now that I have mine tethered to my router and I know my router, my like, like, let's say you're, you have a Netgear router like me. Okay. Um, at home, a gaming router, right. And you want to use that as your primary source of internet, not the MoFi. Okay. So what you do is you first tether your, uh, your gaming router to your MoFi. All right. And then, um, you're going to put it into your, uh, WAN port on your gaming router. And then from your WAN port, ethernet it over to the, port one through four on your MoFi. Do not put it in the WAN port on the MoFi, it won't work, all right? Once you see the internet light come on, you're just gonna basically go into your, like, your router settings and you're just gonna change your, your SSD ID name and password, okay? Don't put it on repeater mode, don't put it on bridge mode, access point, none of that shit. It just literally, turn off the 2.4, uh, turn, turn off 2.4, oh my God, dude. <clears throat> Let's just see if we can get to it. Real quick, guys, real quick. So I'm in my Netgear uh, router that's tethered to my MoFi settings, okay? Yes, you can access either or. There's the MoFi, there's my Netgear. Now, all you would do is you'd go like to your wireless, whatever router you have, a TP link, a whatever. See, you always have, most of these routers today, they'll have a 2.4 gigahertz band and a five gigahertz band, right? Look at this. Enable SSD broadcast is off. I do not want to broadcast this at all. We do not have five gigahertz with the MoFi. It's only the 2.4. So make sure your five is off so you don't have conflicting multiple names um, for your shit. Uh, don't really need to mess with any of your damn settings. All you really need to do is just make a make your name, like this is my Wi-Fi name, and then your damn password, okay? Uh, once you got all that, you click apply, right? And then close it out. Then see if you can go to your router settings through your, your uh, go through your MoFi settings through your router, okay? You should be able to access this after it's tethered correctly. Like I said, WAN port on your, on your gaming router and then port one through four on your MoFi, okay? Literally, it's that simple. And then you're using basically the, the name that you made on your gaming router as your home network or whatever router you're fucking using. All right. Now, when you go down to Wi-Fi over here on the MoFi, Wi-Fi rate, once you know that it's working, turn off the Wi-Fi radio on your freaking MoFi. So it's not blasting MoFi internet. It's just blasting internet through your router. Does that make sense at all? Okay. Um, another tweak I use is I'm on channel one. That's a channel that's a safe channel where you won't uh, conflict with your neighbors. So always go with channel one, six or 11, but one seems to be the best for me. Bandwidth's always 40, everything's 100%. I've changed none of this shit. All this is already preset. Okay, so that's a quick rundown on that. Um, some of y'all talking about NAT types, start messing with this shit, this shit, and maybe some of this shit and this, and it might help you fix your NAT type. There's tons of videos on YouTube how to do that. I am not gonna get into all that. Now, one of the other things, if your MoFi starts acting cray, or you know, you wanna check the updates, like I said, go into your system, right there. Oh shit, yeah, go to system and then scroll down. Uh, internal module flasher, not manually, unless you have the, the, soft, the, the new firmware on your desktop or something, okay? Um, hey, there's a reboot right there. I wonder if that's different than shutting it off. Anyway, that's just too much work. Internal mo module flasher. Oh my God, I just updated this song, bitch, two days ago, or actually, no, yesterday. And it says there's already a new one available. Current version 06, now we're going to 2.30. Okay, so it's gonna do that whole 10 minute wait. Once you hit start, you might have to click it again, save, and then it's just gonna show you a countdown from 10 minutes on. All right, let your, let your MoFi do the update. Do it before you go to bed or something if you don't need internet. Um, don't be messing with your internet shit while it's doing that, honestly. I don't even think you'll have internet while it's doing that because it's going to do reboots and shit. And then if you want it, when it's finished and you go back into the MoFi, go back into your system and it'll say, it'll say something like, it is up to date, okay? So that's what you want to keep in mind. All right, guys. Um, Go to Amazon real quick. That's pretty much all for the MoFi, guys. You don't really got to mess with too much of anything. So you want to start with the lowest grade antenna because you're closer to the tower. Type in 
Prox E. Sorry, I'm trying to hold this while I'm filming. Proxycast 4G LTE antenna. Well, it's usually, there it is, okay? Boom, it's MIMO because it's got two cords. It's, you put it on a pole and boom. All right, you got tons of antennas. Like these are omnidirectionals, they're trash. I do not recommend them at all. Uh, these are your basic Yagis I was talking about that come with your boosters. Get two of these, make your own MIMO. All right, because you'd have one and you'd have two, make MIMO. Um, so like I said, start with that or go to the Yagis. They make longer Yagis too. The longer ones are probably better. Uh, like this one right here. See, it's a little more expensive. You get two of those. Okay. Don't try these stupid air cards. They're fucking trash. Um, okay. So that's what you need. All right. Those are the types of antennas you need. If you're looking for what I have, uh, log periodic digital Yagi antenna. Okay. Let's get the record straight too, guys. Yagi's are log periodics. It's all the same shit. I just separate the two because these are fucking longer. Um, and there they are. All right. So there's the grid right there. If you type in parabolic grid, there it is. That's what it looks like. I'm going to give you five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Okay. Okay. And there's a Yagi. There's another kind of log periodic Yagi. Okay. There's tons. And then there's the log. So I have this and I have this and I have this. I have two of these. This was originally, this one right here was on my booster. Um, I changed it out with this, okay? And then I have this going to my MoFi for the secondary antenna. This going to my MoFi is the primary antenna. Take a look. Take a look. All right, 4G LTE antennas. That's all you need. Look, you got other ones too. Um, that thing should be the same as that thing. Um, I mean, it's all the same shit, guys. So there you have it, guys. I just wanted to show you and break it down. Um, you can play with things. They got, they got ones on eBay from like Lithuania that are freaking like, you can just get the feed horn. And then if you want to put the backing on the feed horn yourself, like this part, this backing, you don't have to locate that on the internet somewhere and make your own like antenna, okay? Because their feed horns are like 30 to 50 bucks on eBay uh, for this, this piece right here, okay? Um, <clears throat> which is the crucial piece. So guys, I hope this was helpful. Um, like I said, it's Easter. I have nothing better to do, just shooting some shit. Um, and uh, shoot me your comments, questions, concerns. Um, there's a lot of people saying, you know, put it, put uh, power over ethernet. I'm like, why the hell would I do that? I mean, I've got, they're like, well, instead of using your long, uh, low loss cables, okay, they said do power over ethernet. I'm like, well, why the fuck do I want to do that? I already got the damn cables running into my house. I said, they're 15 feet. I have 15 foot cables, two of them. One running from that one and one running from wherever my other log periodic went, okay? 15 feet. That's not very long. I'm not getting shit for loss. When you start going 100 feet or more, you're going to probably notice some loss. Power over ethernet, I guess apparently you can get like for like a, like a, like a little adapter square thing and a plug in and then it'll be an ethernet port. And then you can run that to the MoFi directly. Okay. You can try that. Uh, I know nothing about it. Never tried. Okay. Next question. Um, <laughs> I'm just rambling here. So the biggest thing guys is if you got reception, you're going to have internet. You can run gaming on five megabits of internet. I can run gaming on 1.5 megabits of internet. Okay. If you have a stable signal, um, you will have internet, guys. You, you will have fast internet, all right? It's just the, all about dialing it in and finding the best decibels. Well, that will guarantee you. Don't just point it up there blindly and just pray that you have a signal. Fucking look at the live time. Go here. Quick check signal strength or check signal strength. This is a little different, but it's pretty much the same thing. Either one. Negative 7.2. You want this to be negative 90, negative 80, negative 70. I'm in negative 103. Okay, that's pretty bad. It says fair. That's the best I've ever got it out here. Um, like we saw it at one negative 102 a couple minutes ago. All right. Diversity strength. I don't even know what the fuck that means, but I'm more concerned with this and this. Okay. Um, says I'm on Verizon right here. That means I have internet, firmware Verizon. Okay. There's some live decibels for you right there, okay? But I just usually just take a look at this. 
I get up there on the roof and I start turning my antenna and I watch it grow or I watch it lower. All right, that's how you want to do it. When you just get on your phone, put in 192.168.10.1 and start turning your antenna, that's how it's going to help you out. I don't know nothing about this GPS shit. I only use advanced band lock, band lock, band scanner, internal modem settings. And that's pretty much it, man. I don't mess with nothing else. And then I'll just check, I'll go to system and check the firmware. That's it, guys. If your SIM's not reading or working, last resort, man, go on the back of the MoFi. There's a pinhole, put a fucking pin in it and reset it. You know, hold it down for like 10 seconds. Do a factory reset. Um, I think if you do factory resets, you are going to lose your firmware upgrades. That could be why my shit's still so far out of sync with the upgrade. Maybe it's just I'm catching up. You have to do one and then you have to overlap the other one on top of that one. I don't know. Don't get too confused, guys. This is as simple as hooking up a router at your house. Put the SIM in, plug and play. Like I said, plug in your gaming router, your, your good router, if you want more coverage, um, and then you will have you know, more Wi-Fi radius. I've known people that have also told me to buy a couple of different bunny ears, the really long nine decibel bunny ears and put them on the MoFi if you don't want to use your router. So you could take the MoFi antennas off uh, for the for the Wi-Fi piece and get two long like nine decibel uh, SMA male um, ports make sure they're the right port size for the uh mofi instead of using your other your own router but dude i tried that and it was like slower so i think for some reason having an ac netgear gaming router makes it fast as possible so that's what i use i also have down here this here is a power line this is a power line it's plugged into a wall and it's etherneted to this computer <clears throat> so this computer is not even wi-fi it's wired but it's wireless the, uh, the other plug to that to that power line is plugged in upstairs um, into the MoFi or onto the back of my router with the Ethernet, okay? So they're, they're going through your wires through your house. It's weird, but it works. So, um, yeah. Power lines are better than using repeaters, guys, because if you do have repeaters, turn the repeat mode off and just use them to, to like, direct connect, like, with LAN, okay? If you start tethering, like, with repeaters and shit, you will lose significant um, decibels and shit. You will. So I turned off all my repeaters and I'm just doing everything through the gaming router. Babs, your video must have finished because we're getting 40 megs. Shit. 42. So there we are, guys. Killing it. Now I got to upload this long ass video. God, this video is going to be so long. It's going to take me over an hour. It's going to be, it's already 8.49 p.m. That ping is phenomenal. Like, I don't care what y'all say. It's great for me. So, and it works. All right. That upload's kind of shoddy, maybe because their video is still uploading. So it's degrading some. But hey, I used to be at one. I'm usually at five to eight now. Can't complain. You guys have a great Easter. Um, rock on, baby.